This video will explain the process of infrared data transmission, especially the kind which is used in all standard television remotes. It is a rather simple wireless communication protocol which uses near-infrared light in order to transmit data. This is light that has a wavelength that is just below the visible light spectrum. In other words, the human eye can't quite see it. If you want to transmit with IR light, you can do it with one of these IR LEDs. It is just like any other regular LED diode, except you cannot see the light it emits. This is the same diode that can be found on the front of this remote control. In fact, any remote or IR transmitter will have some permutation of this IR LED. When you transmit and receive IR, you do so in a flooded environment. Everything from the lights in your ceiling, the sun, or even the screen you are watching this video on could be outputting some form of IR light. However, this IR light will be present in random wavelengths and have no particular structure. This is why 38 kHz was chosen for the frequency of commercial IR transmission to operate on. Now, to further explain the process of IR transmission, I will use this remote control as an example. Let's take it apart to see the components inside. The components that you see here are typical for most IR remotes. When you take off the back cover of the control, you can see that there is really just one part visible a printed circuit board that contains the electronics and the battery contacts. The main microchip is packaged in what is known as a 20-pin dual inline package, or a DIP. Next to it, you will also find a transistor, several resistors, and of course, the IR emitted diode. I will explain the role of each component in just one minute. Attached to the circuit board, you will also find a plastic film which houses the contacts and wires for each individual button, and the silicone buttons themselves. When a button is pressed on the remote, for example the on-off button, a small metallic pad is lowered onto two contacts located on the plastic film directly under the button. This sends a signal to the integrated circuit board at the front of the remote control. Each individual button sends a different signal. Then, a small pre-programmed microchip recognizes the signal as coming from the on-off button and encodes it into a series of electrical impulses. Sort of like Morse code. These impulses are then carried to the IR emitting diode at the front of the device, where they are emitted as impulses of IR light. In the receiving device, in our case this DVD player, this whole process is essentially repeated in reverse. The IR receiver diode picks up the incoming IR impulses and converts them back into their original electric signal. This signal is then carried to the circuitry of the DVD player and is recognized as the on-off button being pressed on the remote. We can draw a simple graph to show the sequence of an IR signal. The y-axis shows the voltage and the x-axis will show the time. We can take the voltage as the direct voltage being passed to the IR LED. It can be either on or off. If we take the on button example, the LED is held on for 24 milliseconds, then held off for 8 milliseconds, and then on again for 10. However, we mentioned before that there is a lot of background IR radiation. Therefore, the IR signal actually looks like this. It is modulated at 38 kilohertz. This means that every time the light is on, Instead of being constantly on, it flashes at 38,000 times a second. The IR diode in the DVD player then only picks up IR signals that are pulsing at a rate of 38 kHz, therefore cancelling out all background radiation. 